Hello and welcome to part 3 of our tutorial on nanotechnology using sets and dictionaries. What we need to do now is find out which molecules contain particular atoms. For example, if we read this data and we're asked which of these molecules contains chlorine, then the list should include chlorine and sodium chloride. So let's switch back to our terminal windows. Here's our editor and I've created a new file called produce.py and what I want to do is something like this. I want to say uh, data equals read, what was that function called in nano.py? Read molecules, molecules from sys.studin. We're only reading from standard input at the moment. We'll come back and fix this to read files later. And then we want to say something like um, atom is sys.argv of 1. Remember sys.argv of 0 is the name of our program. And then we want to say uh, can produce from that data and that atom, and that should give us the set of all of the molecules we can produce. Now in order for this to work, I need to import the system library so that I've got sys.argv, and I also need to say from nano, let's import read molecules, because our file nano.py has our molecule reader in it, and we can use any Python file as a library. So, right now, this won't run because I don't have a can produce function, but I can easily write one. def can produce, there's our formulas, and there's the atom we've got. Uh, return the set of molecules that contain the given atom. And I'm typing too fast for this terminal, the given atom. All right, my result is an empty set. And now I'm going to say for molecule in formulas, remember looping over a dictionary tell, gives you back the keys of the dictionary, so those are the names of the molecules. Um, the value is the atom and count pairs, so I'm going to say pairs is formulas of molecule, and then if atom is in pairs, i.e. if this atom is a key in that atom count pair dictionary, then result add the name of this molecule, and when we're finished, return the result. And at this point, I can just say, look, let's do that. If this atom is in the value associated with the molecule, i.e. if it's in that sub-dictionary of atom and count pairs associated with the name of this molecule, then let's add the name of the molecule to the results. So let's see what happens when we write th run this. Python, what did we call that? Produce.py. Um, chlorine, read it from molecules.mol. Oh, wait a second. There's the empty set, but that shouldn't be empty because there are things that contain chlorine. And what's producing all of this? We're not printing that out in our program. Where is that coming from? Um, oh, I know. Let's go back to nano.py and take a look down at the bottom. We are always printing the result of read molecules from sys.studin. Now, look what this means. First, as we import this library, it's reading everything from standard input, which means that when we call the function a second time, there's nothing left in standard input for it to read, so we've got no data, and that explains why this set is empty. We're looking for chlorine in an empty dictionary because we're trying to read all the data from standard input twice. The first time we read it, print it, throw it away. The second time there's nothing left, so we wind up with an empty dictionary. The second problem is we're always printing the result of read molecules as we import the library. Importing a library executes the lines. Most of them define functions, but this line is actually doing something. So what I need to do is say if my name right now is main, then I'm the main program called from the command line, please run this line. If I'm being imported as a library, my name will be something else. In this case, it'll probably be nano. In that case, this statement won't be executed. So let's flip back, rerun, and now we get the result that we should get because we're only calling read molecules and printing its result if nano is being run as the main program. When we're importing up here, we're not executing this line, so we're not consuming all of stood in and throwing it away, and we're not printing that output that we didn't want. Now, I should write a lot more tests right now, and I probably should check down here that I've got at least one command line argument besides the program name, but this will do for now.